a regular meeting. I'd like to uh, start off with uh, uh, concerning the electronic meeting. Uh, this public meeting will be conducted pursuant to Governor Eric J. Holcomb's executive orders 20-02, 20-04, 20-08, and 20-26 and Governor Holcomb's exercise of his powers under Indiana's Emergency Management and Disaster Law, Indiana Code 10-14-3. Additional information regarding the meeting is provided in the annex published with this agenda. So thank you all for another virtual meeting. Uh, we're getting good at this. Um, Roger, you had mentioned, um, well, let's recognize the attendees uh, that are, uh, in the audience. Sally Zalonis is, is recognized. John Tasley is recognized. And Leslie Hunt, if you would like to be recognized, if you may be able to raise your hand on uh, one of the icons down at the bottom of the screen. And if you can't find it uh, when we log you in, uh, uh, should you need to speak during your business, well, there you go. Thank you very much. Three attendees have been recognized. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, all right, so uh, moving on to agenda item number three. Wayne, if you can give us an update on the reports. Certainly happy to do so. Uh, as, as written and in, in front of everybody, the documents, you have uh, AE, the newer project is AES Restaurants. This is a uh, a lot in the Bennett Parkway subdivision where, the, where FedEx is located. This is an exciting project. This is wraps up the last available lot uh, within that subdivision that was created in 2013. Uh, next project on your list is uh, Zinesville Medical Office Building. It's a project we talked about a few times. Aria Apartments is uh, moving through their uh, finalization of their, of their project. Uh, Blackacre, uh, which is the brewery at 98 South Main, uh, they are moving forward with their uh, renovation efforts and will look to appear, could be as early as tomorrow, at the corp, uh, Community Development Corporation's meeting uh, talking about some potential incentives. Hotel Tango as well uh, on the list there. Again, another project that's potentially appearing or will be appearing at the, the CDC meeting tomorrow morning. Uh, you have 106th and Bennett Parkway uh, project mentioned as well there, which is the Seth Alt building. Uh, we have our Trico edition we've talked about a few times in the Michael Cole project at 30 North Main, uh, renovations as well as and a project as Iron Will Real Estate Holdings on Bennett Parkway is the final project on that list. Another project to mention in the TIF district, though it's a non-contributing uh, parcel of ground, if you will, is, is because the town of Zinesville owns it, is the demolition permits were issued today uh, for the PNC, former PNC facility, as well as uh, the locksmith. So tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. is when the project to remove those improvements will commence. Again, 9 a.m. tomorrow. So that's a, a project that's uh, on your radar. Uh, check, close, uh, check back for future details on the next steps there. Uh, other items on your list, Appaloosa Crossing, uh, certainly working through additional items. Uh, earthwork pre-con had occurred uh, recently. Uh, certainly was also on your uh, in your knowledge base that uh, there would be a meeting of the uh, consultant, financial consultant, the school and the project and RDC leadership. To my knowledge, that meeting has not occurred yet. Certainly there's been some conversations in between uh, members of the, of the school board, the financial consultant and the Appaloosa Crossing uh, process or team, but there's been no advancement of additional new information uh, for RDC leadership to be involved with, look at, or consider. Uh, specific to projects, you know, Creekside, we continue to market the property. Your bid process will be discussed later this evening. Uh, we're working on setting up that stormwater mitigation meeting uh, here in early August to push that ball, ball forward. Uh, CDC, we're also continuing uh, with seasonal maintenance and mowing. Uh, did some release a recent uh, irrigation repair work. Uh, certainly back to uh, the marketing and review of Creekside. Uh, the purchase agreements, uh, other items, letters of intents, other other instruments that are that have been reviewed and kicked, reviewed and considered. Uh, specifically speaking to uh, your your continued work to develop a uh, transactional document 
uh, associated with Ray Hall Letterman Racing. Uh, also mentioning tonight the uh, rescinding of the, and I'm not quite sure what the legal words are going to be, but uh, Ray, uh, excuse me, the uh, project known as William Trace has released the RDC from uh, the, that uh, letter of intent slash um, development agreement. So just something else that's on your radar. And I did send in a few questions to Sanjay and, and some questions came in from audience members. One here tonight, John Towsley had a few questions about uh, those purchase agreements and I, or letters of intent, other legal documents. Certainly um, right now would be a good time to pause and, and cover those items as I, I have right now have concluded my report. Okay, great. Just for clarification for Appaloosa Crossing, uh, and I don't have the uh, letter identifiers, but I want to say it's IJK, lots IJK, is that correct? The southernmost retail lots is what they're continuing to move forward with? You are correct. Okay. All right. And, and nothing further on the residential component of it at this time, right? We, we have received nothing from the developer or uh, regarding that proposal, but there is no news to report on that. Okay, great. Any questions for Wayne? Um, we'll have the, the, the bid openings for the public offerings for uh, Creekside coming up uh, later on the agenda. Any other questions in regards to his reports? I have one question on the William Trace when that you say they release that agreement, meaning they no longer have interest. Well, I can I can explain it. Yeah. Wayne, I can explain that if yeah, you'd please. like. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> yeah, there was a, we executed a, uh, the RDC um, executed a mutual termination agreement with William Trace. Um, the project that they comp they contemplated um, when we entered into uh, the term sheet. Uh, back in late March um, don't have any immediate viability and so they didn't want to preclude uh, the RDC from exploring other opportunities with respect or with uh, respect uh, to lots 10 11 so thank you thank you okay. any other questions in regards to uh, the report Okay, great, thank you. Uh, next item of business is the approval and adoption of our minutes from our June 22nd uh, regular meeting. Um, are there any questions in regards to the memory? I'll move that we adopt them. Thank you. Second. Motion and a second, thank you. Roger or Wayne, can you do a full call on that, please? Roger, I'm happy to facilitate that. Ms. Hiddle? Yes. Mr. Ezra? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. I'm going to check our roster here to see who else is here. Oh, Kate Swanson has joined us. Kate. Yes. And Ms. Madrick. Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you all. So moving on to new business. Uh, Wayne, if you could share with us um, information on uh, the land offering for Creekside Corporate Park and the results of our advertising and solicitation for offers. Yes, I'm happy to introduce that Rogers handled uh, the, the bulk of, of this okay. effort and certainly Brian as well has, has supported those efforts. But in summary, we completed uh, the statutory process to uh, publicly offer specific lots within Creekside Corporate Park. As previously discussed, this effort was done for a number of reasons, uh, be it to reset the narrative on specific parcels within Creekside, speaking to how the Redevelopment Commission owns this real estate, as you recall from a number of years ago, there was a, an offer to buy the entire park. And we have, have learned, you know, subsequent to those efforts that part of the market was confused about who owned Creekside Corporate Park. So this certainly helped, we believe, uh, to narrow down that narrow that understanding. 
as well as to solidify the you know the town's you know continued uh, efforts here to to market these parcels uh, as we previously discussed we specifically did not include lots 10 11 12 13 and 14 in that public offering process as there was you know robust uh, participation and, and thoughts and ideas coming towards the town uh, as of course as you know the redevelopment commission has uh, Ray Harlett and Racing uh, in discussions on lots 12, 13, and 14. And currently on lots 10 and 11, there are three different entities pursuing those lots. So a uh, very, very strong activity out front. Uh, no real in paper uh, documents on lots 10 and 11, just uh, lots of uh, thoughts uh, coming in. Uh, but you do are aware of the purchase information that's come in for lots uh, 12, 13, and 14. Uh, certainly, Roger, is there, and what's the results of our efforts to uh, solicit uh, responses to our bid process. After waiting for emails to arrive or phone calls, we received zero bids on any of the lots that were advertised. There were no bids submitted. Okay. Great. Did you get any feedback from potential bidders uh, in terms of what types of questions they had, the reservations were? The only inquiry that I received uh, was through a phone call and a real estate company is interested in uh, providing a bid on one or two of the lots, but they said that they were going to wait until after the public hearing process, public process concluded. And uh, they even called back this afternoon to, to speak with me about it. And they said that we should, uh, depending upon the announcement of tonight's information, they said that should the lot that they are interested in still be available, that they may be submitting something as soon as even tomorrow. Great, thank you for that update. Any questions in regards to our advertising uh, for the contact <coughs> from RDC? Roger, this is Kate. I just had a question. Why was that company um, more interested in submitting their proposal after the bid, do you know? If you recall in the bidding process, it did establish a minimum bid amount for each oh. lot. And they were very upfront. They said that the number that they would be offering would be below that minimum amount. So they, okay. even if they would submit it, it would not be considered it here in the public process. Okay, thanks. Good question, thank you. Any other questions for Roger? Okay, hearing none. Uh, we'll move on to okay, Sanjay. I, I go ahead. I would I would suggest maybe uh, Brian Christ jump in and sort of offer next uh, description of next steps. Um, there is a certain waiting period where the RDC can uh, start those types of conversations, as described by Roger. Uh, certainly good to get that ball out there, um, just on the records, and we all know it. But let's just we can discuss it publicly sure. and, and uh, move on. Yeah, uh, per the RDC. Uh, the Redevelopment Commission statute, we'd have to wait 30 days uh, before you could consider um, uh, a, a, a for, for those properties uh, that would be below the minimum offering, offering price, go ahead and submit, you know, an offer whenever they want. It's, it's really up to them. But um, in order to accept an offer that would be below um, the, uh, the statutory, uh, the statutorily determined offers, we'd have to wait 30 days. <clears throat> okay. Great, thank you for that, Brian. Okay. Any questions for Brian or Wayne or Roger? All right, moving along, um, we do have a request from the Community Development Corporation uh, for a grant for Leslie Jane, located at 150 South Main Street. Um, in your packet uh, was provided some information on the, the amount of that grant and the use of the grant and also the CDC's uh, uh, proposal in favor of approving the grant based on our RDC's decision. Um, Wayne or Roger, can you provide a, a quick summary of uh, what the request is and for what use? Certainly. I Sanjay, I'm definitely happy to jump in. I've switched off my video just to save on bandwidth a little bit. But uh, the, the Community Development Corporation met earlier this, I'm sorry, late last week, I believe it was a Thursday morning, 
and discussed a filing for a grant request. That grant request came from uh, Les uh, company, Leslie Jane. Leslie Jane Hunt is here this evening online to talk about this grant request. Um, this, the Community Development Corporation uh, certainly has provided this type of work for a number of years. Uh, they, they're vetting projects and looking to benefit Zionsville and the community uh, related to uh, shoring up existing businesses, taking advantage of situations where they can leverage tax dollars to enhance a facade, something to you know, generate additional AV. Certainly with the COVID-19 situation, this has changed the world of grants in, in, and certainly in Zionsville. Um, last month, earlier in, in May, there was conversations on how to enhance the Community Development Corporation's role in facilitating uh, support of our existing businesses uh, that have been Im impacted directly by COVID-19. So this request deviates from what you're used to typically seeing, where it's a request that's coming in that you can quantify um, the, the, the assessed value that will be generated or future tax dollars that are be generated by a particular request. This request is different, and I think other requests going forward will be different uh, in, in this same light. And in fact, what these requests are striving to do is shore up existing businesses and keeping their lights on and allowing them to weather better weather this storm uh, than they are currently able to do. Uh, certainly the grant amount that's been requested is something that the CDC could repeat. There could be multiple requests for this, this dollar amount. Could be more, could be less. But in summary, this is different than what you've seen before. The CDC was enthusiastic uh, about the opportunity to, to assist Ms. Hunt with her, with her business. Uh, certainly it's a, it's a very unique situation we've never seen in our lifetime, but certainly Ms. Hunt is on the line to talk about uh, the filing, the request, the need, and next steps. Could I ask a question now or should I wait till after the presentation? Go ahead. Okay, my, uh, Wayne, my question is, um, how is this being advertised to businesses? Well, we've, we have provided a press release. We have, we've discussed this program with several interested parties. Certainly I, I cannot profess that every business in town knows about this. We did a press release. We've, you know, done other, you know, marketing type of efforts those will intensify. I think that will, those will certainly really intensify with the documentation of this request, how it's, how the process works, what type of award is granted. You know, certainly we will do, you know, there will be future advertisement based upon, based off of any actions. Um, so definitely leveraging, you know, this program into the future. But yeah, as far as, you know, advertising in a, in a um, knowledge base, uh, it, it definitely needs to grow. Yeah, I, I think so. I think it's fantastic. I just want to make sure we get it out there as much as we can. Great. So we have <coughs> Leslie in the audience. Uh, if you could uh, yes. just provide some additional information. The, the write-up you provided in terms of the history and uh, the level of sales, uh, and you were having a great year, uh, which was fantastic <laughs> to me. see. Yeah. You're going to make me relive this, aren't you? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> but just, just I, I love the uh, summary, so I appreciate that. And uh, if there are any other tidbits that you can provide in addition to the summary, uh, the floor is yours. Okay. Um, I'm going to answer uh, Kate's question first. Um, I learned about this on Facebook. I saw a Facebook post and I thought, yes. So uh, I immediately started uh, inquiring what the next step was when I, when I saw the Facebook post. So um, um, to, I, I guess you don't want me to specifically go over everything that you have in front of you. Um, and with that in mind, I'll, I'll jump to, I started doing some research on um, uh, organization or companies that I could contact that would um, help me integrate my current point of sale system with my online um, e-commerce site. Um, not to bore you with details, but currently 
they don't talk to each other. So if I sell something online, I have to um, make that sale happen in my point of sale system. So my inventories are totally separate. Everything is totally separate. And that's not the best way to do business, but um, it's the only way I could do it up, up until this point. So I found a couple of companies. One of them is um, just entering that um, arena and they don't have an ETA for when they'll be um, up and running with a system that will get inside QuickBooks and integrate everything that happens in an e-commerce site. Um, QuickBooks is rather proprietary. Um, and I also um, have QuickBooks Financial, so they all need to talk to each other. Um, the other company, um, I've gotten some bids from them. Um, and I also have um, the uh, bids for uh, Shopify, which is one of the sites that I'm really interested in using. Um, the nice thing about uh, what I've looked into in terms of Shopify is they also integrate with social media. Um, which is, again, another avenue that doesn't talk with anything else that's going on inside my store. So I have all these different venues that none of which are speaking to each other. And then um, the, uh, the other aspect of, of uh, how I'd like to go forward is um, I'm getting a proposal from uh, an individual who can not only help me set up the Shopify site, monitor it, but um, work on my social media for me. I'm kind of a one-man band, and you, you, you really can't, it, it's, it's impossible. <laughs> it just really is impossible to, to, uh, to do everything. So hopefully um, I can get that up um, just prior you know, at the start of uh, fourth quarter. Because frankly, I'm a little worried about fourth quarter. Um, I don't think any of us knows what's going to happen, but I, I certainly want to be prepared for it. And to me, that means that it's probably going to be, fourth quarter is always heavily online anyway, but I think that the situation that we're in right now, um, it's going to be even more important. Okay. Great. Well, thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions in regards to the use or the uh, CDC's recommendation? Sanjay, I'll, if nobody has a question, I'll go ahead and uh, put forward a motion to approve the uh, CDC's recommendation of the $10,000 $10, request. I second. Motion and a second. Thank you both. Um, Roger, if you don't mind, could you do a roll call? Slide two. Ms. Hiddle? Yes. Mr. Ezra? Yes. Ms. Swanson? Yes. Ms. Madrick? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Mr. Patel? Yes, thank you. Motion carries. Thank you all. Thank you. Moving on, do we have any other business to cover this evening? Move to adjourn. Well, I, I would pause here, Sanjay. Um, you do have the two questions that were posed by Mr. Towsley, who is in the audience this evening, uh, related to the language of the different documents, the William Trace document, and I believe the Ray Hall document. Yes, thank you for that reminder, Wayne. Could you give some additional detail on that, please? Certainly pulling up his uh, email, and again, Mr. Mr. Talsey, I believe is still in the audience. Um, two specific questions uh, written here. Uh, the March 27th letter of intent from Ray Hall speaks to a purchase price of to be determined. When will the purchase price be determined? And what is the criteria the RDC will use to decide uh, to uh, accept or reject? I did editorialize a little bit in that reading that language. Uh, the second question, the April 27th term sheet from William Trace states that the RDC will convey the property for 
that amount seems a little small. Please explain. And that is the conclusion of the uh, two questions that were emailed in earlier today. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Brian, could you jump in and provide a response? Sure, well, so, you know, final decision making, of course, is vested in the RDC with respect to, you know, the direction that they want to move with respect to these two, uh, these two different opportunities. Obviously, William Trace is now gone, but, you know, um, you'll be confronted with a similar set of issues with respect to lots 10 and 11 should another, uh, another purchaser uh, surface for those lots. And, you know, for the size of those lots and the types of developments that would be in those lots, uh, you know, an end user is going to ask for, you know, different types of like development is kind of the reality of, you know, anybody that's looking to make a, you know, multi-million dollar investment and build, you know, build something that exceeds 20,000, 30,000 square feet. So, um, so you can, cut, you know, you can cut the economic development uh, incentive pie in, in multiple ways. You can, you know, discount land um, in exchange for no TIF or tax abatement, you know, so it really kind of depends on where the final negotiations, you know, shake out with respect to any of those opportunities, you know, in the direction that you might want to go. So it's, it's really going to be up to your discretion based upon, you know, what the negotiated, uh, the deal um, that um, Ray Hall Letterman um, uh, is proposing um, once we get through negotiations with the development agreement. Right now, I'll tell you, they have not asked for, you know, tax abatement or real property tax abatement or any of those types of incentives, so. Thank you. I think what's important here is, um, you know, if the town did not own the land, uh, more than likely the developer would come in, as Brian mentioned, for some other sort of incentive. So this is the town's opportunity to provide an incentive up front uh, to make this Creekside Corporate Park attractive for uh, particular users. Correct, and to save your, you know, and to realize the uh, increase in assessed value from whatever the, you know, whatever uh, the end user is going to purchase. You know, if this is third party owned property, you're right. Um, it's likely that the developer um, or the end user would want, um, you know, some mixture of of uh, TIF financing for infrastructure or maybe, you know, long-term uh, property tax or personal property tax abatement. Thank you. It's not to say you would agree to it, but that's what they would ask for. So, but under the circumstances, uh, RLL has not asked for any of those types of incentives. Wayne, does that cover both questions there? I, I believe so. Uh, certainly, Mr. Towsley is, I believe he's still in the audience. Um, certainly, if there's a reason to, uh, for him to express any specific clarification, I believe now would be a, a fine opportunity. Sure. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, if I understand the response, then basically you're saying the TBD means the price will be determined upon further negotiations at a later date if you decide to go forward. Would that be correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. The second point is I realize the deal's off the table, um, but ten dollars does seem to be pretty low. Uh, you had an advertised price. It just seems like such a non-starter to offer ten dollars if if the price uh, had to be much higher. I I don't know about why or where they did that, but that didn't make any sense to me, and that's why I asked the question. You may not have an answer for that. The last thing I would suggest too. Is there obviously documents in your possession that haven't been made available to the public? For instance, uh, uh, and I'm in favor, by the way, of the grant to Leslie. I think it's a great idea. But there are no documents online. And so for a person sitting out here in the, in the great ethernet, I have no clue why you're doing what you're doing. I would suggest then that you might consider summarizing, at least for those of us who are listening by Zoom, what's going on if the documents have not been posted online beforehand. End of comment. So, 
just yeah, actually with respect to William and Trace, and if if you don't mind, I, I think the, the the purchase price was was more determinable in those circumstances because if I remember correctly, um, the RDC made it very clear that they would not be uh, contributing TIF or uh, property tax abatement or other form of the, of economic development incentives with respect to that particular opportunity. Like it was certain enough that 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 was at least the negotiations on the front end. That that was my recollection. In an RLL, we're still in the process of negotiating. Correct. And on the Leslie Jane proposal, um, I just clicked on on the agenda, and it's got her detailed proposal there within the agenda documents online. Is that what you're referring to? You know, I clicked on a button too, uh, and I'm not seeing the same information. Maybe I got the wrong button. Huh, it's on page, let's see, it's, a, it's further down um, in the, it's right after the agenda. If you keep going down the page, it's got the, the detailed proposal from Leslie Hunt. I'm looking at a document that appears to be, let's see, I can't tell how many pages it is. At the end, it has a uh, Community Development Corporation incentive process flowchart. Yep, go two, go two pages up. Okay, maybe I missed and it. You'll, you'll see it right there, the assistance inquiry form. Now I see it, my error. Okay. Thank you, Kate. Okay, great. Any other business, Wayne? Well, Sanjay, since you prompted me, uh, I, will, I will do a shameless plug for uh, the town's calendar for tomorrow. We have a variety of opportunities for the public uh, to uh, participate uh, via virtually or in, in person, uh, where, where the Parks Department is soliciting comments specific to projects related to Mulberry Field, or they are at Mulberry Field soliciting uh, interest and, and uh, input from, from, from park users and other, other citizens of, of Zionsville. Uh, and at the same time, the, uh, the Airport Authority and the Town of Zionsville jointly are hosting a public open house in one of the hangars at the airport to discuss the uh, creation of a land use plan uh, outside of the airport's fence. This is not a meeting to discuss previously FAA approved plans related to the airport, be it its potential cross run one way or potential expansion of its existing uh, surface, uh, but this is a, a project where the town is looking to identify the ideas for future land planning uh, in proximity to the airport. Uh, again, this is a, a public uh, opportunity hosted, an open house hosted in an air, airport hangar, uh, but certainly someone can visit the town's website as well, uh, view the video that will be provided that evening, can view the other documents that will be provided that evening. Uh, there's no cause to necessarily attend, you don't have to, we can uh, solicit your comments virtually, uh, and we look forward to uh, taking those in. Great, thank you, Wayne. Both important meetings for the town. I'm sorry, what did you say, Sanjay? I said both important meetings for the town. There's also a big development in the village tomorrow. Is that right, Wayne? Or I should say a um, tearing down tomorrow. <laughs> yes, Kate, uh, I, can, I can definitely cover that. We, we will see the demolition of the PNC building uh, commenced uh, with the, I believe it's 9 a.m. Uh, please uh, uh, attend that if you're interested in, in seeing uh, history in the making. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, can I ask what, not, just really not um, all that important, but are the Zionsville lock and key guys still in business or are they completely shut down? Uh, I don't, I don't know uh, their personal status. I do know that the the locksmith has always been a very busy and important part of the town. Um, right. And I do, I believe I mean, he's still in business. I, I, I don't personally know where. This is, um, he told me that he was going to be working from home. Oh. But when you call, when you call the number, you'll, you'll still be able to reach him. He's just going to work from home. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you all. Um, any other business? Okay. Hearing none. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All right. Thank you all. Have Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Have a good night.
Sehr gerne.